Hello everyone and welcome to A Game in a Chair, brought to you by the American Civil War Gaming Club. As always, you can check us out at acwgc.net for more information. If you enjoy American Civil War gaming and particularly the WDS Civil War series, you're definitely going to find a home with us in the American Civil War Gaming Club. We're always looking for new members, so feel free to check us out. My name is Blake, I am the host here on A Game and a Chair, and today we're going to talk about the optional rules. And there are 27 different optional rules, and so for me to do them all in a single episode would be impossible. So I'm not even going to try. This entire video, as a matter of fact, is going to concentrate just on this rule here, optional fire results. Is there a particular reason I started with this one? No. I literally put them into a randomizer, and this is the one that popped out, so this is where I'm going to start. Each of these different rules is important in the game, and you need to understand that. And there's so many different optional rules now that people really don't take a lot of time to learn what exactly they do, and why they check some, and why they don't check others. So this whole series about optional rules is just going to be explaining what they really do. You know, to some people, they're already going to know. Other people, this is going to be brand new information for them. I mean, how many people have really asked themselves, why do I use optional fire results? Or why don't I use it? Well, let's talk about it now. Let's really dive into it. Because it's really a pretty interesting optional rule. Optional fire results. If you select optional fire results, then the resulting fire casualty values are based on the average of two default fire calculations. This produces values which are more likely to be in the mid-range of the casualty interval rather than uniformly distributed. Huh? I mean, that's, that's a really confusing couple of sentences. Maybe not to some people, but to me it was one of those, hey, what are they trying to tell us here sort of moments. And I'm probably not alone in that. So I began to dig into all this a lot deeper. And the first thing that I realized was that everything going on behind the scenes is all math. And that's a fact. Every time you fire offensively or you have defensive fire, every time you launch a melee, really anything that you do in these games, you fire artillery, all of these things come down to math. The game is constantly running calculations behind the scenes, and those determine what effect your fire has, and what effect your enemy fire has, and whether you lose a melee or win a melee. All of it comes down to math. And once you accept that, you really begin to understand how these games really work. So, accepting the fact that we're going to be dealing with some math here for a little bit, let's move forward. All right, I'm going to try to make this as simple as possible, not only for you, but for me, because I don't like to do math any more than anybody else. I am not going to read this entire paragraph. I'm just not. It's a lot of math, and it's heavy. I'm just going to give you the bottom line. If you have 500 men armed with rifled muskets, and you fire at a range of one, against an opponent, and there are no other modifiers in place, you are going to inflict between 10 and 50 losses on that enemy unit. And the average expected result would be 30. Between 10 and 50, the average is 30. Really simple. I'm not going to get into all the different numbers and how you calculate low-end and high-end combat results. All of that is in the user's manual. It's also at the American Civil War Gaming Club training area. If you want to learn more about that, that's where you really want to go. But for the purposes of this video, that is the bottom line. 500 men firing, one range, rifled muskets, high end 50, low end 10, the average is 30. Trying to keep it as simple as possible here. Now, let's move forward. In theory, the rules should create more mid-range results 
between the high and the low combat result figures and reduce the outline high and low results. It does this by doing the fire calculations twice and averaging the result. Now, let's talk a little bit more about that here. Without the optional rule, the results should average about 30, but with larger outliers being possible. So in the example on the left, let's just say you do not have this optional rule checked and you fire three times. You could possibly get 20, 25, and 45 as your fire results. Now these three all average 30, and this is just an example. But you'll see you've got an outlier there of 45. And that's more than likely possible without this optional rule being used because it only rolls the dice once. Now, with the optional rule checked, the results should still average about 30, but with fewer outliers. And the reason is because they roll the dice twice. And so you're gonna have numbers that are closer, always closer to that 30 mid range. And so you might have fire results like on the right hand side where you get a 38 and a 30 exactly, or a 22. You're gonna avoid anything above 40 and below 20, usually. Not always, but usually. You're gonna have fewer outliers away from that 30 mid range because all the calculations are done twice. Now, cool, does it really actually do that? Well, the only way to find out is to test the rule. And the way I did that was to do 200 different firing results, 100 with the rule checked and 100 without the rule checked. And again, we're doing 500 soldiers firing. The results are gonna be between 10 and 50. The average is gonna be 30 and there's no other modifiers involved. So, boom, there is the chart. Clear as day, right? Eh, probably not. But test number one is in blue, and that is with the rule. Test number two is in red, and that is without the rule. There should be fewer blue dots at the higher and the lower ends of this graph. So on the left-hand side, you have casualties, 10 through 50, and on the bottom, it's the number of tests, zero to 100. So you should see fewer blue dots on the high between the 40 and the 50 losses and the low between the 10 and the 20 losses. And I think just by eyeballing it, you can kind of see there's red everywhere, but the blue is kind of concentrated more towards the center. But let's break it down a little bit. We're gonna put a line down here where the 20 loss limit is. And below that point, you'll see there are 26 fire results without the rule being checked. And there are 19 fire results with the rule being used. So you have a higher probability of having an outlier without the rule being checked. On the opposite side, if we go up here to 41 through 50, you'll see there are 28 test results without the rule being used and 15 with the rule being used. So again, there is a greater probability that you're gonna have outliers if you don't use this optional rule. So in that sweet little center area there, the number's right around 20 to 40. You have 66 results with the rule being used, and you have just 46 results without the rule being used. So you can kind of see how the results stay in that middle area when you use this optional rule. Now, you might be thinking, it doesn't seem that extreme, right? Is it, is it really that big of a deal? Well, let's put these green lines on the map, and let's just concentrate on the extreme extremes. 45 to 50, and 10 to 15. And if you do that, you have 43 results without the rule being used. That's huge, because you only have six results when you do use the rule. So it's much more likely you're gonna have these outliers if you do not use this optional rule. Whereas if you do use the optional rule, you're gonna stay in that 20 to 40 range a lot more consistently. The funny thing is, both tests were right around 30 casualties per fire result as expected. So if you were to add up all these different dots and all the different figures, it didn't really matter in the end. If you average out the results for all the red dots and blue dots, 
Test number one, with the rule being checked, had an average of 29.4 losses per firing. And test number two, without the rule being checked, had an average loss of 30.5. So 30 per fire result, exactly what was expected. So in fact, this rule does actually work. It does exactly what it advertises to do. It eliminates the outliers when you have fire results. You might be wondering why this rule exists. And this is my theory. Here we have a chart, really elementary, right? In that middle line, let's assume that's 30. Most people want to stay right around that 30 casualty limit line. It's comfortable for them. They aren't gonna have extreme results on one end of the spectrum or the other end of the spectrum. They kinda of wanna stay in that middle range. And that's what this rule does. It keeps you pretty close on average to that 30 casualty loss whenever you have a firing result. Without this rule being used, you can have losses that are higher and lower on the extreme edges of the fire results table. And for some people, they like that. They want to gamble. And when they do an offensive fire, they want the possibility that they're going to cause max casualties. However, the flip side is they might completely miss and end up on the low end and only inflict a few casualties. So it can be kind of a risk. If you want to accept the fact that you might not always get the best results, then you know don't play with this rule checked. If you prefer to have some more predictability behind your fire results, well, then you would want this rule checked. So an analogy that I use here is the seasons. People don't really enjoy extreme temperatures, whether it's hot or cold. They wanna stay in that nice springtime area where it's neither too hot nor too cold, and it's just perfect. People enjoy that. They don't want to experience the two extremes. And this rule really allows people to stay in that comfortable area. But in the end, I mean, it does all average out. Whether it's in our games over 100 fire results or in real life over 365 days, in the end, the average is gonna be somewhere in the middle. That's just the way it is. Now, should you use this rule or should you not use this rule? To be honest, it doesn't really matter. I mean, in the end, you're gonna have the same average number of losses whether you use the rule or you don't use the rule. But people have really embraced this optional rule because they don't like to play on the two extremes. The last thing you want is to do offensive fire and just keep getting snake eyes time after time and ending up on the low end of the spectrum with as few losses inflicted on the enemy as possible. Especially if they keep rolling sevens each time and they keep inflicting the maximum losses on you. After a while, that begins to really annoy you. So you kind of want to have some fail safe to where, hey, you know what, if you keep rolling poorly, maybe on the second roll that the computer does, you'll get a better result. And those two will average out closer to that 30 average point. And that's what you want. So does it really matter if you use the rule? Probably not, but you should still use it just to give you a little bit of peace of mind that your results and your enemy's results are probably gonna average about the same and there's not gonna be really any huge outliers with your fire results. All right, everybody, I do appreciate you watching. I hope you learned something about optional fire results. If you did, be sure to like this video. I always appreciate it. And it does help the algorithm and gets us out there to more Civil War gamers. Also, subscribe. If you do that, you will get notifications when new videos drop so you can stay up to date on all things WDS Civil War Gaming and in the American Civil War Gaming Club. All right, guys, I will see you here next time. And until then, just keep gaming.